Hey guys, it's History Behind the Warrior, and today I'm going to be breaking down everything we currently know about the Injustice 2 storyline. I'll be using sources from the Injustice games, comics, and website, along with any stuff that we've managed to pick up on from seeing gameplay or stuff from within the trailers. Now, I've created a diagram which you can see here, showing off all of the heroes currently confirmed for the game. Over time, I'll be adding more people to this list, but until then, we're going to be talking about what we know. I've put certain characters into a certain group because it either goes with their MO, or we know enough about them to put them here. Now just to give some context when Justice 2 will pick up, a mad Superman was defeated by Batman and his insurgency, along with some help from a parallel Earth. Now Clark was placed inside a prison that emits red sun radiation, which essentially renders the Kryptonian powerless. Now despite the red sun radiation, there is a slight tease that he's building an immunity against it. Now former members of Superman's regime are either on the run, or in some cases set free, as long as they no longer don't demand of who they were. And that brings me to Injustice 2. Now let me bring up the diagram once again, as you guys can see where I've grouped all of these characters. Now before any of you ask, I've purposely left out Reverse Flash, Jon Stewart and Power Girl. And that's because for the most part they are just skins, not their own playable characters, to a certain extent. Now I've left out Darkseid because he's a pre-order bonus, and he might end up getting the same treatment that Goro did in Mortal Kombat X. So I'm kind of leaving him off this list, but I will say for the record if he is part of the story, which is indeed a possibility still, he will most likely work independently, as Darkseid himself doesn't really play well with others. I also want to let you guys know that I'm going to be throwing out a few theories here and there about what I think could happen with certain characters. So I guess somewhat spoiler alert? Now I'm going to stop faffing and actually get to the factions. Now we're going to start with Batman's forces, starting obviously with Batman himself, who led the insurgency against Superman's regime and was eventually successful in defeating them. Now although Clark has been been defeated, there is another war brewing between Batman's forces and an organisation going by the name of the Anti-Justice League. We'll get to them. Now Bruce hopes to rebuild the world that was once destroyed, with the assistance of the new heroes he has by his side. And whilst bringing up new heroes, let's talk about Blue Beetle, one of the newer characters in the Injustice universe, and someone who's still trying to understand the extent of his abilities. You see, the scarab attached to Jamie Reyes's spine is in fact a bit of alien tech that has the ability to cope its wielder in a bit of armour and weaponry. Now the downside to having the scarab on you is the fact that it does have the ability to influence the user, turning them extremely violent and dangerous. Now due to this, Jamie sought out Bruce Wayne, and Bruce would extend his hand and help Jamie overcome the influence and finally become the hero he wants to be. Now Harley Quinn has been by Batman's side during the entire Injustice Civil War, due to Clark killing the Joker. This is enough of a reason for her to want him dead, but it does seem like Harley Pauline Quinzel is really pushing Bruce's patience, as her mental stability is making it extremely difficult for her to stay on the right side of the law. We then come to a character that has been seen, but there hasn't been any gameplay of him so far, and that is Barry Allen the Flash, a man who was on the wrong side of the Civil War the entire time, and even defected from the regime in the first game. And by the time Clark was defeated and many members of the regime were being arrested, the Flash could have disappeared off the face of the earth, but instead he handed himself in. As he did want to atone for his crimes. Now although Barry wasn't imprisoned, he did give up the mantle of the Flash. Now this part gets slightly vague. Barry Allen does return back to being the Flash, with the reason being that there are forces working against the heroes, and I believe this is implying either the Anti-Justice League or Brainiac. Now from my point of view, I would highly doubt that Barry would go back to working with Superman, due to previous experience. Just so I believe that Barry will be aligned with Batman and his forces. Now let's talk about the wild cards currently in the universe, and probably the most important character in the story, Supergirl, someone who is said to flip flop between Superman and Batman's side. Now Supergirl is the cousin of Clark, so naturally it would seem like she would go to his side, but when she learns of Clark's actions, it's definitely going to have her go back and forth between the two sides. Now there's something within the realm of possibility that many people have thought about, and that Supergirl has in fact been brainwashed by Brainiac. And that could indeed be a possibility, as she was sent off to Earth at the same time Kal-El was, but due to some trouble, she arrived on the planet much later than Clark had. Now what is the possibility that on her journey to Earth, her pod came into contact with Brainiac? 
and he's secretly using her as a puppet. Just think about that for now, it's just a theory. Now the other wild card we have is Hal Jordan, pretty much known to everyone as THE Green Lantern. Now Hal was confirmed to be within the game, as there's a John Stewart skin for a Green Lantern character, and Hal is also mentioned by Atrocitus during some dialogue in the beta version of the game. So I believe this more or less confirms his appearance as Green Lantern, especially at the end of the game where he's taken before the Guardian, alongside Sinestro to pay for his crimes. Now the reason why I say Green Lantern is such a wild card, because if it is Hal Jordan, then we don't know which side he's going to align himself with. He's had problems with both Superman and Bruce, so unfortunately, I can't really say which side he's going to go with, although in the first Injustice game he did give up his fearing. So the question is most certainly in the air. Now we can talk about Superman's side. Obviously at some point, Superman is broken out of his cell. I strongly believe that it is Supergirl, just saying, but Clark seems very hellbent on regaining the world he had lost. So once again, Superman is after world conquest. At least that's what it seems like, but there's clearly a lot more going on here than what we actually know. Now we can get to Wonder Woman, someone who has essentially been next to Clark's side the entire time. Now after the fall of the regime, Diana went into hiding and has been confirmed to be biding her time until Superman is released. Now whether or not she's the one to release him from prison is within the realm of possibility, but blood is thicker than water, so I think that's going to be Supergirl's role. Now we come to the most recent addition to the cast, Robin, aka Damian Wayne. Now Damian has always been at odds with Bruce, and this hatred intensified when he accidentally murdered Dick Grayson. So needless to say that the two haven't been on the right side of each other. Now not much is really known about Damian, and we don't even know if the two have bothered patching their relationship, but we do know for sure that Damian will not side with Bruce. Now we can get to my favourite faction, the Anti-Justice League, who somewhat seem to be the faction that is currently battling Batman's forces. Now after Clark's fall, it seems that Grodd, who was originally imprisoned by Superman, has in fact broken free. Knowing that the world is currently in a weak position, Grodd assembles himself, a team of villains, so that they can conquer the world. Now we don't know much about Poison Ivy or Bane right now, but they are Batman villains, so Poison Ivy could want to save the planet, whilst Bane simply wants to break the bat. So that's the only things we can kind of go by so far. Now the final member seems to be Deadshot, someone who's in fact been forced to join them. You see, it's been no secret that Floyd has been a member of the Suicide Squad on multiple occasions, and Grodd, who was aware of this, has managed to come into possession of a detonator for Deadshot, as he has a bomb lodged in his skull from his days being in the Suicide Squad. Now Grodd seems to be blackmailing the hitman, or his head will be turned into scrambled eggs. So it makes for a very interesting dynamic between these two characters. Now we can talk about Aquaman. It seems that from the first game, the Aquaman has cut off all connection to the outside world, wanting to only rule Atlantis and take care of his people. Now unfortunately, it's extremely vague with Arthur. So unfortunately, this is the extent we know about Aquaman. And now we come to the Madman Atrocitus, the leader of the Red Lanterns, and someone who was seen to have come to Earth with a vendetta, as we know that he's travelled across the entire galaxy to hunt down the Sinestro Corps, as they were responsible for murdering and oppressing his home world. So he comes to Earth with murder and destruction in his mind. And during the demo, if you play as Atrocitus against Batman, he questions Batman about the location of Hal Jordan. Now it also says from the Injustice website that he comes here not only to purge the Sinestro Corps, but to also recruit some new Red Lantern. So who do you think out of the entire cast will become a Red Lantern? Now we come over to the big bad guy of the game, Brainiac. But all isn't really what it seems. You see, from what I can tell about the lines being redrawn trailer, it seems like he doesn't want to take over Earth, but instead unite it once more. As he mentions again and again in the trailer, how friend is fighting friend, and how maybe with his interference, that they all may unite. Maybe there's more going on with Brainiac than we truly understand, and maybe he's not really the true villain here. But of course, this is all complete speculation, so I could 1 million percent be wrong here. But it does add a layer of complexity to the character that just doesn't make him feel like another bad guy. But what do you guys think? Please let me know in the comments below. Hopefully everyone here has enjoyed this and taken something away from it. Also let me know in the comments below who do you want to see in the game, and if possible guys, let's try getting this video to 750 likes, as it's a great way of helping myself and this channel out. Now as always guys, please comment, like, subscribe and share this video with everyone you know. Please take care and I will see you all next time.